Hey guys, it's Dan from Soil Leader and welcome back to the channel. Today on episode three of One Take Wednesday, I'll be going over my SWAT plate carrier. Uh, I'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks and some little things that I do to hopefully get your plate carrier set up. Uh, but just remember, a little disclaimer here, that every plate carrier is gonna be different and depending on what you do and what your mission and uh, you know, area of operation is, your plate carrier is gonna change. Um, so going over the actual plate carrier itself, it is a Cry Precision JPC 2.0. Uh, inside we've got level three uh, plates. Uh, starting on the front, I'm just gonna kind of work my way down. So we do wear multicam, that's what we wear. Uh, we're a rural team, so a lot of, you know, we're a county team, so a lot of our stuff uh, is in the woods and we wanna have that capability. Most of our search warrants though are in the city. Uh, starting from the top here, I've got a juggernaut phone case. Uh, this is just an iPhone. Uh, my team is not running iTech, but I do have the capability on here to look up uh, preloaded mats that do not require internet connection, as well as uh, getting a live drone feed for our drone unit. So when drones are in the sky, I'm able to pull that up. I do need cellular though for that. Uh, sheriff identifier on the front, this one happens to be IR. For search warrants, I do put a high vis one on there, which is uh, yellow writing. Moving down here, we've got the Spiritus System uh, Mark V. So this is their newest uh, little chest rig placard. Uh, I liked it quite a bit because it was very streamlined and very thin. I didn't want any bulk on the front of my plate carrier. I try to keep my plate carrier and the chest rigs as minimal as possible, uh, especially being law enforcement. I'm not going overseas. I don't need the loadout that uh, most military guys are running. Uh, as you can see here, I only have one rifle mag anyway, so I'll go over that in a minute. But I like uh, how slim that is. Like I said, uh, you'll notice here on the top, I did install, let me hold this up for you. I did install, I did create uh, a little zipper pouch, right? So I sewed up a little zipper pouch here. And the reason I did that is because I wanted it for breaching. A lot of times when I'm running my initiator, I don't want it in my hand when I'm up at the door for obvious reasons of placing the charge. So I have a little zipper compartment here. That initiator's prepped and gets stowed inside the zipper pocket. Uh, you can't see it here probably, but there's two zippers. And the reason I have two zippers here for multiple reasons, one in case one of the zippers fails in the field, I can still close the pouch. But number two is that once the, the lead line, the shock tube is sticking out, I can then close the zippers all the way up tight to that. So it sandwiches it in between those two zippers. Moving to the front of the placard here, I do have a Blue Force Gear triple 556 uh, mag holder. This is basically just elastic. What it allows you to do is kind of have a lot of versatility in what you put in there. So here you have, uh, I just have a dead bang just to kind of show you that it holds a standard CTS bang pretty well. Uh, as well as here I've got a Surefire Stiletto Pro, which is a thousand lumen flashlight. It's a very good task light, but it also could be used as a tack light. Uh, there's better options out there for a tactical flashlight, but as an overall general use flashlight, highly recommend it. But what this also allows me to do is put rifle mags in here also, if for whatever reason I do need more rifle mags. So the versatility of those pouches are uh, pretty awesome. I do recommend them. Uh, moving over to the bottom here, I'm not going to go over exactly what's in the bag. It, it's breacher specific, but this is a Spirit of System lunchbox. Uh, I, will, I will be making my own pretty soon. The reason being is that this one's just too large for me. and doesn't really have the insert and the stuff inside that I want. I ended up customizing that a bunch, so I'll show you that at a later date. But essentially in here, it holds all my breaching supplies. So my initiator, uh, razor cutter, junction clips, uh, electrical tape and whatnot. So there's a lot of uh, extra stuff in here. You can see it's pretty bulky right now. I could, I'm gonna streamline this a little bit more, but that's in the future video. Moving around to the side here. Uh, actually, I'll go over just the push talk. So right now we are running dual comms. So you can see here is a dual, this is a TEA push a talk. We're actually having issues right now with these, uh, with our Harris radios and our ops core headset. So this is actually gonna get swapped out in the near future, most likely for an Invisio set. But in the meantime here, I got a TEA headset held in by a custom little shock cord uh, retainer that I made. Uh, Ferro Concepts does make one that's exactly the same thing. I just happened to make my own because there's no point in buying it. Uh, moving around to the side here, I do have uh, a couple radio pouches that I made. So they may be hitting the market here, hopefully at the end, by the end of the year, but essentially radio pouch, Velcro's in with some spacer mesh on the back side that make it a little more comfortable. So those hopefully will be coming out here uh, by the end of the year. Moving around to the side, so I do run soft armor. Uh, again, there's a lot of debate on whether or not you should wear hard armor or soft armor. Uh, being a law enforcement officer in the States, my personal opinion is that soft armor is good enough for me. But again, that's gonna be a personal choice. Uh, 
based on what your team's running, where you're you know, operating in, as well as uh, what your most common threats are. So for me, I chose soft armor, so it's just a cry uh, soft armor pouch that's hooked onto the side of the JPC. I do run a, uh, a knife, any sort of knife will do. This one happens to be the, uh, the Tor Halo Strategic Collab. Uh, Travis gave it to me a while back, so it's got some sentimental value to it as well. But I keep that right in the side here for my non-gun hand to be able to poke, stab, or usually just cut open ammo boxes on the range. So what you'll notice here already though is that my plate here is set up with the right side always intact, right? So whenever I don my plate carrier, put my plate carrier on, I always do it with the left side open. It allows it to sit in my passenger seat, which if I'm going the hot call or whatever I need to, I can take it from my passenger seat, put it on my head, lift the placard and set it forth. So it just, it's an easy way to put on the plate carrier. Uh, I'd highly recommend that, get it all set up, size correctly, leave one side detached and the other side open. Moving around to the side here, uh, Blue painter's tape, sorry guys. Uh, this is coming out hopefully uh, quarter two, probably quarter three of this year. Uh, it's gonna be a pouch. That's all I'm really gonna say about that right now, but I got some painter tape holding that up, so stay tuned. Uh, moving around to the side here, I do run, these are Velocity Swift Clip buckles. I do run those to help insert to the bottom of the plate care, or the placard here on the front. Sometimes uh, when the Velcro wears out, that placard can open up especially when you're like kneeling down or, uh, you know, for me putting a charge on a door, I don't want that placard to lift off when the Velcro's old. This one happens to be brand new, so I don't really have that issue, but two velocity clips on those bottom buckles help with uh, keeping that nice and tight, so I don't have to worry about that. Moving around to the back. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't take it off, but basically I'm gonna have a breaching sleeve here to hold mechanical tools. Again, uh, that's down the pipeline as far as gear, hopefully coming soon to you guys. But right here, we've got uh, just two flashbang pouches. I believe these are like Blackhawk or something like that. I'll tell you right now, they do not hold CTS bangs very well. Uh, so what you, you probably can't see from where you are, but what I essentially did is I had to cut these, sew these, and actually tape these to make them so they fit on those bangs properly. I'll pull the bang out the front and kind of show you here. So CTS mini bang, that's what my team's running. You'll find here that as I put it in there, there was a lot of slop. So I actually took some shock cord, right? And this is uh, eighth inch shock cord and I wrapped it around the back side of it. I'll hold it up real quick. See if you see. So right here, some shock cord. And what that allows it to do is retain this bang very well. So once I have that clasp going on, all you have to do is pop it, grab the top, and it is right, right it's in your hand ready to deploy. So little things like that guys and little things like taking that green tape that I linked to one of my other videos, I'll link it down in this one as well. Uh, just green tape, just getting any of the slop, any of the pull tabs away. And you can see you want it as streamlined as possible. So again, insert it, it is a little harder, but again, make sure your spoon's in or whatever your SOPs are. For us, it's spoon in, pin facing the body. Close that up and you can see here, that's pretty tight, right? So. It's still a little sloppy. Again, these just don't fit these CTS bangs uh, that great. If you've got some other options, hit me in the comments. If not, you're gonna have to wait further in this year until I come out with mine. Uh, sheriff identifier here as well. And basically nothing else on the back. So it's pretty slick right now. Uh, again, in my role as a team leader now, I don't really need all the bulk anymore, especially as a breacher too. So you'll notice the front of my placard's pretty slick. Only one mag on there. I do have one mag on my belt. So that's a, my speed reload. So I've got one mag on my belt, one mag on the front of the uh, plate carrier, and then one on the rifle. So I am running three mags. Moving around to the side, shock, uh, I'm sorry, a shotgun retainer right here. So this is actually a 220 pound magnet uh, that holds my breaching shotgun, my Remington 870, I think it's with the MCX uh, shotgun on here, right? So 220 pound magnet, I can actually hang this, I can actually hang from this on my steel rafters in my basement. So it's a freaking strong magnet. Uh, I'm basically gonna be coming out with a product similar to this uh, with a little more retention and a couple more features. So again, stay tuned for that. I'm giving you guys a bunch of hints as to what we're coming out with, but moving along to the side here, I've got the uh, bungee cord retainer for the shotgun. So again, I don't just run it with the uh, magnet. This the sling right here, if you will, a single point sling is attached to the shotgun, right? And that can either go under your arm or you can hook it up so it goes behind you. But essentially as I come up, I bring the shotgun down and I know for whatever reason I drop it or for whatever reason it does come out of that magnet, I've got this 
retained here, right? So it's just bungee cord inside tubular nylon with an old, I just had an old uh, Magpul clip on there. So that's that. Move along the side here, you've got another radio. Again, like I said, I'm running dual comms right now. So we got command net and then the team net or op net. Um, it takes some getting used to, I'll put it that way. Uh, it's definitely one of those things where you have to get used to, hey, what channel do I have it on and make sure it doesn't get bumped when you're on the trucks or when you're doing stuff. So right here, you'll see my shock tube retainer. Again, this is all inert, guys. Uh, it's all for photo shoots and stuff. So I've got inert deck cord and whatnot. I'm not gonna go in too far into that, but essentially you can see here, another good option is when I pull this placard up, so I'll just do that right now. I insert my shock tube retainer on the side. That folds down here. I take my red devil and I can actually slide that right into the elastic, right? The initiator would already be in the zipper pouch. And you can see that's pretty streamlined. So you're not getting snagged on stuff, right? This is 60 foot of dual lead line right here. So you can kind of get an idea of how much the shock, uh, shock tube retainer holds. It actually holds uh, either 30 foot dual primed or, or uh, single 30 foot not dual primed as well as 60 foot up to dual prime. So it holds quite a bit. Again, being elastic, it kind of stretches to what you need. So there you have it guys. Uh, one thing I, I do want to point out and I'll show you over here is you'll find there's no cords, right? I try to eliminate all the cordage as I can. You can see all the zippers have the shrink wrap on them. They've got uh, the shrink wrap on them here. They've got knots at the end. All my comms wiring is wired through the, the plate carrier itself. And you'll find here, and I'll try to hold it up so you can see it. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Right here, so I actually run it's called one wrap so it's a velcro brand but it's one wrap and i've got a piece of it here it's essentially what all the belt mount turner holder version threes come with right and you can use this to molly uh attachments and stuff onto your belt as well create loops but essentially all it is is loop or i'm sorry uh hook velcro on one side and then loop velcro on the other side right and you can cut this stuff with scissors and unlike normal fabric it won't fray or come apart so i would highly recommend using one wrap to route all your comm wiring. And I'll try to hold that up right there so you can see it. It's right there, right? So you can, you can buy this. I'll send a link in the description. You can buy this, you can cut it, wrap it around. And it kind of works a little better than zip ties. I've found it holds up a little better. Uh, and you don't get that aggressive point at the end of a zip tie that can cut you. So with zip ties, when you put them on your gear, you kind of have to take a razor blade and really cut that off flat so it doesn't dig into you and you don't want to rub your arm on it and like slice you open in the field. Uh, so yeah, one wrap works really well. When you make it, make it so it wraps onto itself like that. Give yourself a good tail so it almost double wraps on it. All right, so if you have any questions about my play carrier setup, uh, again, send a comment or send me a DM. I'll try to get back to you as best I can. If you have any uh, tips or tricks that you want to tell me, obviously let me know. Uh, but just remember guys, whenever you're setting up your gear, Make sure that you're setting it up so that uh, the gear works around you, right? The gear has to work around you. You don't want to have to work around your gear. That's a big one I see. Guys are like, oh man, I need this med kit. And they put it like on the side here. You'll notice on the side of my plate carrier here, on my gun side, I'm right-handed, right? So my pistol side is as flat as can be and there's no bulges out of there. The reason is I don't want to have to draw my gun and have to move around that, right? So again, if you have to, because you have to carry certain things, so be it like the two bangs on my back i have to carry those are sops uh sometimes my sling does get caught on those but i've just learned uh you know how to manage my sling to not get them caught on there but that's another reason why whenever you add something to your plate carrier you want to go out and train even if it's at the range or even if it's at your house wear it around your house sling your rifle you know switch your rifle around sling it bring the rifle back up anything to help practice that before you go in the field with it and actually use it operationally because you don't want to the first time you use a piece of gear you don't want to rely on it you know with your life re, uh, relies on it or your teammates life so make sure you're going out there testing your gear make sure your gear is holding up and then lastly i'll say make sure you're maintaining your gear that's a big one you'll see guys not check their buckles not check uh the nylon not check the zippers make sure that you know I would say every six months, do it twice a year, right? Every six months, go over your gear and make sure it's all uh, it's all up to date and it's all in good condition, right? I mean, I, I do mine before any operation. So before a search warrant, I'm going over my kit, making sure everything's good, making sure my shotgun retainer is good and stuff like that. So again, that's why we're professionals, right? So 
make sure we're doing all these little things which will, which will set you up for success. So that's it, episode three of One Take Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.